definitely would advise to research an herb before using it with your dog. And the best way to research an herb, I believe on, you know, in my opinion, online is to look for a site that is talking about the herb that is written by an herbalist. Um, there are many, many great, great sites out there that herbalists have that talk about the traditional uses of herbs and how you can use them. And most of, most of the things that apply to humans apply to dogs, um, most. Um, but the best information you can find is usually written by an herbalist um, or uh, a health company that has an herbalist writing for them. Uh, I find that a lot of the you know mainstream um, health and wellness sites um, are going with the, I would say, popular um, depiction of herbs, which can get you in a little trouble. So definitely, if you're researching an herb, try to find an herbalist that's writing about it. Um, and then there's nutrient herbs, okay? So things like fruits and greens, um, they're mild and they're safe for long-term use. Um, an example of this, a nutritive herb would be like something like nettles. Uh, nettles are a powerhouse. If you want to start with one herb for your dog that works really well, especially like in the spring and summer months, um, freeze-dried nettles is excellent. Uh, you can make a tea and put it on your dog's food. Uh, nettles is a, just a mineral powerhouse and you can't have good health without, without um, a good mineral um, content. So uh, minerals are really important in life. Uh, and then, so like foods can be known as herbs, dandelion roots, um, uh, berries, strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, always try to use organic sources there. Um, and then other medicinal herbs should be, should be limited. And usually because they are high in what is called alkaloids. Um, and alkaloids uh, can have a negative effect on the liver. These are things like Oregon grape root and oregano. Um, you wanna stick to, if you're using things like that, when you're starting out, you want to stick, stick to a dried version of that, not any type of alcohol, alcohol-based tincture, because um, alkaloids love alcohol, and it's how you extract um, alkaloids from those herbs. So you want to avoid those when you're starting out, or use only use like a alcoholic tincture of things that um, like organ grapefruit or golden seal, um, oregano, under the supervision of a holistic vet. Um, and then uh, there's some sites out there if you're starting out with herbs that are a really good sites to um, research and find out more. And, and some of them have safe protocols. Some of them have already made products that I think are excellent when you're kind of dipping your toe in the natural world and getting a good foundation to helping your dog with, with herbs and natural food. Um, some of those websites are Dogs Naturally Magazine. Uh, that's dogsnaturallymagazine.com, wholedogjournal.com. Uh, there's a company called Adored Beast that makes wonderful um, herbal and homeopathic products. And then there's a lovely vet in Canada. He's not a vet anymore because he stopped being a vet so that he could sell um, really great products. And his name is Dr. Peter DeBias, um, a wonderful, wonderful vet that um, I think he also does consultations for uh, based on what products that, uh, would be good for your dog. And he treats dogs as an individual. So those are some good um, resources. Um, let me think, is there anything else? Timing, timing for each urban formula can be important. Um, usually when starting out, I recommend that people use dried herbs and those would be given with food. So they're, uh, and when you're using extracts, you usually give them before food. Um, and then, you know, it can get a little more complicated with like, if you're treating a gastrointestinal problem, like for instance, um, if you wanna build up the microbiome uh, in the small intestine and the large intestine, um, you want something that will make it through the stomach acid because dogs have like, dogs have a very acidic stomach that can dissolve bone. So um, you wanna be careful with what type of capsule you might be using if you're using a capsule in that, if we want something to get to uh, get past the stomach and survive that type of environment, we want to use a gelatin capsule. Um, vegetarian capsules are great. However, they tend to dissolve quickly in the stomach. So um, we want to use a gelatin capsule if we want things to get through to 
the uh, end of the small intestine and the large intestine. Um, so those are things that you can consider. Dogs can learn differently, just like people can. Depending on a variety of things, including what you are trying to teach them, various dogs learn at varying speeds and some do so rapidly while others do it slowly. In this video, Dr. Ian Dunbar discusses the reason why some dogs take longer and are harder to train.